Right, so when I think about like the stuff that I want to get done or be productive or being organized, there is a concept that's often in my mind and that is the concept of strategic laziness. Like, for the last like, I don't know, 100 to 200 years in like the world of work, there's this idea of almost the, the Protestant work ethic, this idea that like, you know, we have to work hard and we have to work for our keep and then the, we enjoy the fruits of our labor. And I think when I think back to my life in the past, I very much thought that the stuff that I had to get done had to be hard. Like it had to look and feel like hard work. But over the last few years, I've kind of realized that being strategically lazy is actually a better way forward. And there's a quote that's apparently from Bill Gates where he says that if I want to get something done, I will always find a lazy person to do it because they'll find an easy way to get it done. And that's really what my idea of strategic laziness is getting at. Like how do we find ways to make the stuff that we're doing easier so that we can kind of do it more easily, more lazily, and it has to be less of a heavy lift. Broadly, the way I think about the system of strategic laziness is in three parts, which conveniently spell R-A-D, that is reduce, automate, and delegate. All right, let's start with the R, which stands for reduce, i.e. how do we spend less time on the stuff that we actually have to do? And the first point here is that we can just decide not to do things. So for example, when I was in med school, I took on like a ton of projects. And you know, there's this time where I've, I've like studying for exams in the morning, working on this like medical tech app in the afternoon, trying to hang out with friends in the evening and then doing some like YouTube stuff at nighttime. And I realized that my, my to-do list was so overloaded with stuff that I just didn't really have time to do the stuff that I actually wanted to do. And I didn't really have any margin in my day. And I realized that I'd been, I'd been chasing all these different projects for the sake of CV points because I was inter interested in getting into plastic surgery, which is very competitive. Um, and there was a very scary moment where I was like, oh my God, if I just get rid of one or two of these projects, if I just back out from them, then that would free up my life to do the stuff that I actually care about. Um, and I was trying to balance, you know, do I want to be a quitter or, you know, do I actually want to want to do the things I want? And eventually I decided after like, you know, many weeks of soul searching, thinking, do I really want to be working on the stuff? I decided actually I'm going to back out of these projects that I said yes to earlier on. Um, and it was like painful for about a day and I felt really bad sending the message and like t t chatting to the people I was working with saying, hey guys, this has been a lot of fun, but I need, I need to back out of these projects. But it was really, really, really good. It was really good for me because then I could focus on the stuff that I wanted to. And it was actually good for the team as well because now they weren't, they didn't have me on board where I was sort of like half-assing it because I wasn't actually very interested in the thing. And so these days, if my to-do list is overflowing with stuff, I often think back to those times where I just deleted things from my to-do list and I backed out of projects. And I realized that it's actually okay. It's totally okay, A, to say no to stuff up front. This is something I'm very bad at. I'm trying to get better at it. And I wish I were better at saying no to things up front. But it's also totally okay. Once you've said yes to something, you are allowed to change your mind at a later date. You can withdraw consent, as it were. And so, you know, I often look through my projects list now and I think, you know, do I really actually want to be doing all of the things on this list? And often, whenever I do that, once every few weeks, if I'm feeling like overwhelmed with stuff, I realize, oh, I actually don't really want to do that project. And then I think, okay, I need to pluck up the courage to send a message to the person saying, I actually don't want to do this. This is not a priority anymore. I'm really sorry, all the best, that kind of thing. And I've always been glad for it in the long run. Point number two in the reduce camp is to try and feed two birds with one scone, as they say. So I spend a lot of time when I'm, when I'm on the toilet, I just scroll through Twitter usually. Uh, and this is generally a huge time waste. But then a couple of years ago, I took this online course run by my friend Tiago Forte called Building a Second Brain. And almost overnight, I realized that like my addiction of like scrolling through Twitter while I was like on the toilet or in bed or like waiting for a bus or anything like that, I actually could use that because Twitter isn't just a place for scrolling through random stuff. It's also a place of finding interesting ideas and engaging with them. And I realized that like, because I wanted to be a writer and I was making these YouTube videos, a lot of the ideas that I got while scrolling, scrolling through Twitter, I could then save into my notes and then I could expand on them in the future. And so this is another form of strategic laziness whereby the thing that we're doing for one reason, i.e. having fun scrolling through Twitter can also have multiple benefits. And now I'm like, you know, I, I search through my life for all of the other different ways in which I can feed, feed two birds with one scone. Finally, in the reduce camp, we have the idea of batching. This is something I first came across in the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, but it's a pretty standard productivity concept. Basically, we wanna batch similar tasks together. And so back in the day when I was making YouTube videos, I would film one video at a time, get everything set up, film the video, put everything away, and then repeat that process kind of ad, ad nauseum. These days, we have one filming day every week where on Thursdays, 
Um, I just film two or three and sometimes even four videos because it takes so long to get the lights and the camera set up. It, it takes so long to get my face looking reasonable and me shaving and dressing somewhat reasonably well that I might as well film more than one video when that's happening. And so batching in terms of like making YouTube videos, in terms of answering emails, in terms of doing admin, in terms of opening my physical mail. There are so many areas of our lives in which batching is useful. Washing the dishes, doing the laundry, letting the dishes pile up for like a week at a time and then doing them all in one go. My housemate absolutely, absolutely hates it, but hey, you know, anything for productivity, am I right? All right, moving on to the A component of our RAD system. A stands for automate. And this is basically about figuring out different ways in which we can use machines use computers and use the internet to automate aspects of our lives. The first one comes in the realm of generating income. Um, trying to make passive income is a form of strategic laziness because the problem with active income is that we're trading our time for our money and trading time for money is generally suboptimal because, well, it takes work and we're trying to be strategically lazy here. Whereas the alternative way of approaching it is to think about building products and building stuff. Because if you build something, if you make a YouTube video, or if you write a book, or if you make a digital product or whatever, make an online course, you can then do the work in building it once, and then you can sell it multiple times to multiple people without having to put in any extra work. And so now when I'm thinking of new lines of revenue to add to the business, or other things to do in my life, I'm always thinking, okay, what is the kind of strategically lazy way to approach this thing so that I can build it once and then I can sell multiple times. Automation isn't just about building stuff to make money. It's also about building systems that can help streamline and improve our lives in a strategically lazy fashion. And so what I like to do is that whenever I find myself doing something more than once, like making a YouTube video is something I do more than once, or for example, opening certain files on my computer, on my Mac is something I do more than once. I always try and figure out a system or an automation of some sort to make this stuff easier. Uh, and so with YouTube, for example, we've got this whole like checklist of things that need to be done for a given YouTube video. And theoretically, we follow the checklist. It's a concept that Atul Gawande famously talks about in his book, The Checklist Manifesto. And certainly anytime I've been doing like assisting in a surgery at work, there is always this like checklist system that we go through just to make sure everything is getting done. It's also really useful having a defined system for doing things like managing a to-do list and managing like email and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've done a video about my lazy productivity system linked somewhere over there that expands on this. And I'm also working on a productivity course that's gonna expand on this in much more detail. And it's gonna show you exactly how I, you know, build my system for managing a to-do list and managing email and managing my files and all that fun stuff. It's coming out in August of 2021 probably. And there'll be, there'll be a link to join the waiting list, mailing list if you wanna get more information in the video description. And thirdly, the other way of automating stuff in a strategically lazy fashion is to use apps and tech to, again, automate tedious things. So for example, the text expansion feature in iOS and macOS is incredible because, you know, anytime I need to type my email address in, I used to, I just use one of these little snippets. I type in exclamation mark E and my email gets automatically filled in. I've got this for links to my YouTube gear page as well. People often comment being like, hey, what YouTube gear do you use? And I can just type in exclamation mark gear and it gives them an, a link to the appropriate page. So just figuring out little things like that to automate otherwise tedious activities. And again, the principle I use here is that if I'm ever doing something more than once, and I know I'll need to do it more than once, then taking a little bit of time to build an automation for it often pays dividends in time saved in the long run. Finally, let's talk about D, which stands for delegation. And delegation is one of the ultimate forms of strategic laziness because we actually don't have to do everything ourselves. Now, when it comes to delegation and outsourcing, people often feel that, oh, this is something like only if you're rich can you delegate and outsource stuff. But actually that's not true. Like we all delegate and outsource things like on a daily basis. Whenever you go to a restaurant, whenever you go to a cafe, you are delegating the preparation of food to the chef in the restaurant. Whenever you go to the doctor, you are delegating, you know, the advice and management of your health kind of to that professional. And if we move beyond the idea of delegation being like only a thing for the rich, then we can find other aspects in our lives where delegating stuff appropriately actually does make a lot of sense. The first step for this that I find is to figure out the dollar value of our own time. Like, you know, how much is my time actually worth to me? And so if I'm then doing something that I don't enjoy, that I could delegate for less than that amount, then I absolutely should delegate it. So for example, for me, my dollar hour might be, I don't know, $25 an hour. You know, I, I would value my time at $25 an hour. If I don't really enjoy cleaning the house or doing the laundry or doing ironing, but it takes me a few hours each week to do that, I can delegate that. I can hire a cleaner or a laundry or an ironing or even like a, someone to do all of all three. And if they're being paid $20 an hour, then I am like, you know, 
delegating appropriately because my time, in my opinion, is worth a little bit more than that. Like, you know, crucially, what I'm not saying is that my time is actually worth more than the other person's time. What I'm saying is that for me, the dollar value of my time is higher than they're gonna charge for doing that service, which hopefully they enjoy as well. And therefore I would rather use my own time on things that I enjoy rather than spending time on something that I don't enjoy that I could delegate to someone else. The other really interesting form of delegation that ties into this idea of strategic laziness is actually finding coaches and teachers for stuff. Um, so for example, for the last like 10 years, I've been more sort of, sort of myself trying to hit the gym. I've had a gym membership. I go like twice a week and I haven't, hadn't really made very much progress at all. But it was in the last year, around this time last year, that I got a personal trainer. And now I have personal trainer sessions two days a week. And that's actually fantastic. His name's Dan, he's wonderful. I'll put his Instagram in the video description if you wanna check it out. But it's great because now it's like, I have delegated the management of me getting hench to Dan. And it's strategically lazy because I can pay him whatever amount per hour and I can go to his place, he's got a nice gym. And it's more fun because it's nice having someone there. I don't have to worry about like setting up the weights and all that kind of stuff. I don't have to worry about tracking the numbers. I don't have to worry about my form because Dan is there to help me through the whole process. And that is in a way a really good form of delegation because yes, we can always do it ourselves. And my mom often says, hey, why do you have a personal trainer? Can't you just go to the gym by yourself? And I'm like, yes, I could theoretically, but I know that I'm not disciplined enough and I don't enjoy, crucially, I don't enjoy going to the gym enough by myself to actually make this a habit. And therefore I'm delegating this thing in my life, which I think is quite important because I value my health in some capacity. <laughs> and I think building muscle mass is like a good thing. It's correlated with all these positive health outcomes. I am kind of delegating that to my personal trainer, Dan, so that I'm more likely to actually do it. And this is another way of being strategically lazy. And so if you've got something in your life that, you're, that you think like is, is actually a priority and you have some amount of disposable income, then I think often investing in a coach or a trainer or a teacher in that thing is one of the most valuable things that we can do and has a generally a very high return on investment. And speaking of things that are a great return on investment, one of my favorites is actually Brilliant, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Now Brilliant is an incredible online platform for courses in maths, science, and computer science. The courses are engaging and interactive and informative, and crucially, they're quite fun as well. And so for a very small monthly or annual fee, you can delegate the process of getting smarter to something like Brilliant, where you can do the courses on there, and they're really good. The ones that I've personally enjoyed the most are the computer science series. When I was applying to med school, I was kind of torn between do I go for medicine or do I go for computer science? Uh, I went for medicine in the end and it was a great decision, but I always felt a little bit like, oh, you know, I wish I knew more computer science-y stuff. And so Brilliant's courses on algorithms and on cryptocurrencies and how all that kind of stuff works, along with their courses on Python, I've taken those personally and those have actually been genuinely really good and helped expand my knowledge of the field of computer science in a fun, engaging, interactive kind of way. If that sounds good and you also wanna level up your smartness, then head over to brilliant.org forward slash Ali or hit the link in the video description and the first 200 people to hit that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. If you'd like to know more specifically about how I organize my life, check out this video over here, which is about my LAZI, my lazy productivity system. And you can join the mailing list for my upcoming productivity course in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.